Ganesh is the research director for financial insights at uh, at IDC. He's coming to us from um, Mumbai, and uh, I'm I'm very glad that we're, he's able to to join us today. Welcome, uh, Ganesh. Yeah. Good morning, uh, John. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, John, for the introduction, and thank you for uh, for calling me up for the session. So. We can get going with the session right away. Straight yep. away. Yeah, great. Good to hear that. So today we are going to talk about the open banking. In fact, so welcome everyone. I'm Ganesh PV, Research Director, Asia Pacific IDC Financial Insight. Now, before I get on with my keynote on open banking, I must acknowledge uh, the compelling session. In fact, yesterday what we witnessed, which talked broadly about APIs digital identity and uh, API, event-based API, and quite a few interesting things. Now, taking forward from there, today I'm going to talk about business, that is making business of the open banking with focus on revenue. So hopefully my session is also going to be equally engaging. And please, one request to all of you that, okay, don't hesitate to put your queries, clarifications, and even opinions in the chat box. And we will try to take it up once the, uh, the initial introduction in terms of the agenda is completed in the later part of the session. So let me begin by now the agenda I have broadly split into six segments for that for us to understand what I intend to convey. Like initially I will talk about the spending in the open banking in the Asia Pacific region as a whole, then tying it up in terms of understanding the various banking business model to pursue the revenue component while spending on the open banking. Then we will narrow it down to the potential role within those banking business models aligned to the revenue sources to make sense of the investments. Understand each of the roles better. And finally, we will have a compatibility metrics to identify the potential roles so that, okay, we are aligned while taking up the path of open banking. And we will conclude with a key highlight on, in fact, the execution component in the way forward. Hopefully that will give initial uh, insight and better understanding about the whole open banking landscape. So let me begin by saying that. Now, tracing the spending on the open banking in the Asia Pacific region, if I would say from the IDC's point of view, in fact, Asia Pacific region has witnessed an exponential growth in this spending on uh, open banking. I would rather call it an investment into open banking technology framework. If you see the figures, in fact, from 2017 to 2020, the spending has increased by almost 55% to over $10 billion. Now, that is that seems to be quite an impressive value in terms of uh, uh, connecting ecosystem, what we call it as a connected finance supporting the whole open banking initiative. And going forward from 2017 to 2025, we expect the spending to continue to grow at a pace of close to 30% and, and in terms of uh, value exceeding $23 billion. So you might have seen that, okay, that this open banking investment across Asia Pacific region seems to be quite exponential and growing at a massive space. Now, if we bring it down to the individual countries, you will see China to begin with, man, it has literally uh, accelerated and uh, exploded effectively to say the least, in fact, 80% during the period 2017 to 2020 and continuing to grow at uh, uh, at a speed of 39% for the next uh, for half a decade. Now, the important thing to note is that definitely the disruption, unfortunate disruption caused by the pandemic has contributed to the, uh, the spike in uh, the investment in the open banking during the period 2017 to 2020. Similarly, on the lines of China, India also is going to witness close to 50% and 26% uh, 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 incrementally in spending. Japan, 
36% and 22%, relatively less than the region as a whole or for that matter, peer countries, just because of okay, incidentally, they had built up, in fact, it was not on account of the pandemic, but they had built up adequate uh, infrastructure to build upon the open banking ecosystem. Similarly, South Korea, 46% and 26%. You have got Hong Kong also in the same range. And if we bring it down to the ASEAN bank, uh, ASEAN area as a whole, in fact, you will see that whether it be Singapore, Malaysia, or Thailand, in fact, all almost close to 50% growth as far with the uh, with the with the Asia APAC region as per as such, along with the minor entities uh, or relatively uh, other markets, whether it be Indonesia, Vietnam or for that matter, Philippines, almost all the ASEAN countries witnessing growth in the range of close to 50% and continuing with more than 25% uh, incrementally. Now, important thing to note is that what this, this number indicates, effectively, what does this number indicate is that almost all the financial institution across the region seems to be investing into the open banking, had gotten the, with the open banking initiatives in one form or the other. Now, while the investing is fine, it is important to take a pause and uh, think about, okay, how I am going to leverage the most out of this investment into open banking. That is quite relevant for each of the financial institutions rather than getting into the bandwagon of the spending on open banking. Like when we to set an analogy, I would say that, okay, when we say, in fact, each of the players uh, thinking distinctly is what creates a market. If at all everybody is going to think alike, it's more like a mob and probably may not be adding value to the initiatives. So when we talk about the focused investment, it is important to understand the business models, the prevailing business models in banking industry and possibly ex to extrapolate that into more narrower specific rules in potential rules in the context of these business models to support the open banking initiatives. So that brings me to the, uh, the, the, the to understand the broad business models prevailing in the banking industry and possibly and uh, aligning it uh, with the revenue compositions uh, which we have witnessed. Now, this is the first component, which is the most common business model, that is the tr traditional banking business model, which is nothing but a vertically integrated behemoth, what I call it. Now, here the picture depicts, in fact, that the way I have conveyed, I am trying to convey the point across in terms of revenue is that I have split the revenue in the triad of service charges, interest income, fees, and commission. Now, when we talk about the traditional banking or vertically integrated the business model, it is all about the focus is predominantly on the interest income. And the service charges and fees com fee component is relatively, uh, relatively incidental to the interest income revenues. The second, and in fact, in this model, it is universal banks, in fact, the prevailing banks, which service cater to the all sex spectrum of the, uh, customers, falls into this category. The second business model is all about the specialized banking, which is more as we speak, it is about uh, the niche product services or even segments in the region. It's all about borrowing, narrowing down to the niche area. Now here the revenue triad is focus is predominantly on the service charges by leveraging the competencies in the in their in the product or services which they are offering to the customers. In fact, the if you see in a practical sense the differential licensing policies across uh, the regulators in the region, you will see that okay, this is something which is evolving as we talk about the specialized banking, whereby differential licensing, I would say that okay. Uh, licensing and limited to certain areas, whether it be payments, whether it be mortgage or any other variants, which the, as a part of specialized banking and possibly during the last one and a decade, we have seen significant spike in this model. And the final model is all about platform banking. Incidentally, people associate this platform banking component as a recent phenomenon, but if you see uh, rationally, it is all about possibly the last century itself, the platform 
banking uh, business model had evolved to a significant extent. That is, uh, that is uh, the bank assurance to talk about is the first uh, uh, business uh, aspect which brought in or uh, the heralded the concept of platform banking and banks leveraged the most out of it, whereby the focus in the platform banking is more to horizontally aligned across industry. And in terms of revenue, it is all about fees and commission. So this way, in fact, this this one con conveys the predominant business models prevailing in the uh, prevailing in the banking industry to support the open banking initiatives. Now, these are the business model. Now, it has to be it is more apt if at all we narrow it down to the specific roles the banking institution has to identify with in terms of taking forward and reiterating their uh, presence in the connected ecosystem system so when we talk about the potential role about which also needs to be effectively when we talk about the potential role it has to be in line with the business model aligned to the revenue sources so here i'm trying to map the business priorities and the potential roles which we inside which we can we saw as part of the transition to a more connected ecosystem now the predominant role is all about the financial partner the financial partner is nothing but, as I said, is an extension or possibly brought, uh, narrowed down from the traditional banking model, which is a digitized uh, twin of, 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 of a traditional banking, whereby trying to build upon the portfolio, balance sheet size, and rest of the components is what a uh, financial partner role is all about. Similarly, the niche player or, uh, brought down from uh, from the from a uh, specialized banking business model, you have got the platform player, and the fourth component in terms of the potential role is all about the service provider. Now these are the four broad uh, roles which identify. Now here one thing which we have to uh, understand is that these roles are not mutually exclusive. It is all about how we are going to define ourselves as a financial institution and take it forward in terms by focusing upon the revenue. So the financial partner, you will find that, okay, emerging as a financial partner, gradually transitioning itself to a platform player or a niche player or even a service provider component. So it's all about how you are going to stack up, how these roles are getting stacked up in terms of the business. I will say that, okay, it is on the metrics of proprietary services and the products to begin with the focus. You can see that, okay, financial partner players more in terms of proprietary services uh, and whereas the financial partner and niche players is more focused on the proprietary products. This is the third party services and third party products. Then as we move towards the service provider, the focus is more on the third party pro uh, products and services. And the whole revenue component is split along the non-interest income and the interest income. And depending upon the priorities of the financial institution, you have to align with the identify role and position yourself while investing upon or building the strategy for the open banking investment. So that brings to the, uh, uh, the, the next important element to, to dissect each of these roles for better understanding so that we can identify with that. So here I'm trying to focus upon how each roles meant and in terms of revenue, uh, opportunity and the challenges. So to begin with the financial partner, which we talk about, the traditional behemoths or universal banks, you will see that, okay, it is basically a vertically integrated business model offering almost all financial products and leveraging the ecosystem to build up the uh, balance, their balance sheet size. So here the revenue composition is all about, is primarily on the, as I said earlier, in terms of uh, the business model, is all about the interest income from the balance sheet products. And incidentally, there are non-interest component being leveraged out of transaction banking services and cross-sells as well. So those are the revenue, that is the revenue composition essence of a financial partners. Now, who qualifies for that uh, financial partners? Now, this, this model, this role is predominantly suited for incumbent banks with a deep relatively the customer relationship is an important element and that is what will qualify them for uh, for to take up the role of a financial partner whereby they are digitally transforming themselves to provide new age uh, uh, financial instruments uh, for their customers and at the same time focusing upon 
growing their balance sheet size. In fact, the focus is uh, to such an extent that okay, they want to avoid to a great extent the uncertainty in terms of non-interest revenue. But the challenges are there in this role. In fact, challenges, the primary challenges is in terms of capital investment. In fact, the capital capex or uh, capex component is going to be a significant component uh, decider in uh, in 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 this role. And second important element is in terms of the cultural transition to engage with the customer since they have got a legacy to deal with. The second important role, which second role rather, I would say is all about uh, the niche player, whereby the niche player is nothing but the specialized product in focused upon, it could be a retail, MSME, corporates, or even beyond that in terms of payment or services, any other services component. Now here, the revenue composition is more towards the non-interest component as well as to a certain extent interest depending upon the underlying products which they intend to uh, intend to consolidate upon. And that's what defines here. The, the product is the differentiating criteria for these players. And uh, you will see that, okay, uh, niche players emerging during the last one and a half decades in different areas of specialization. Now, how, who are the people who qualifies most for this in terms of the opportunities to be tapped? It is invariably the small and niche players to further their bringing in a specialized expertise in this area so that they can make the most out of the revenue which comes along with it. The challenges, yeah. The challenges is that is predominantly such niche player tied down to a narrow revenue source. And that is something which possibly limits their diversification beyond core areas subsequently. So that is something which we have to keep, uh, we have to be aware about when we identify ourselves as a niche player. That is quite important to relate to while taking the call, how we want to build about this. The third, a uh, potential role is in terms of the platform player. Now here it is a, a, a it is quite interesting how the platform players have evolved. In fact, as a part of the way they have structured themselves is to provide as a service oriented platform to enable a third party products. It is basically to complement their existing business. They building up an ecosystem to support, to expand it or take the further reach forward. Now in terms of composition, revenue composition it is the focus is the very fact that the platform is coming into the picture is to bring the focus to non-interest income through fees and commission by offering third-party products and services the opportunity in this area is more for the incumbent player as well as the new player it depends upon how the incumbent player wants to position itself by extra by leveraging the platform and that is something which will decide to provide the additional suite of products and services to their customer, existing customer, and 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 to earn additional revenue in terms of non-interest income and widening. At the same time, the focus is about widening the distribution ch uh, channels. Now, the challenges in terms of the platform player, again, in line with the financial partner, it's all about okay capital investment, which is required for an integrated platform. And the important thing to note about the platform player is that how to draw the customer to the banking platform from other popular digital platforms. So that becomes an uphill task. And that uh, before we uh, tread on that path, any financial institution identifying itself as a platform player needs to take a conscious view about how you are going to define yourself and compete with the popular digital platforms. The, the final role which we are going to talk about is in terms of service provider. Now, service provider is gaining traction of late significantly, and you will see that, okay, that as a service provider, uh, possibly the big techs are the, the key uh, influencer in that space by leveraging. You might have heard about the Google getting into that space, or for that matter, Apple as well, and uh, uh, tying up with the existing banking services and leveraging their licensing products, uh, licensing or possibly drawing upon their licensing rights and uh, building up a financial ecosystem of their own. Here, the banks are offering banking as a services to a trusted third party service providers. So the focus is mostly on, primarily is on the non-interest revenue stream, 
the depending upon but at the same time depends upon how you are going to tie up with your partners it is the revenue composition is uh, will be the decide uh, will be the output outcome of uh, the, the 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 partnership you are going to establish now how it is suited for uh, to whom it is uh, more suited this model it is more suited to the new players and relatively digital laggards in the uh, in the banking space, possibly they would like to leverage upon this role to build up their financial balance sheet. Now, the challenges, yeah, the challenges is in terms of how to build the decoupled ecosystem and sustaining an effective management engagement model for competitive environment. So this is the broadly the distinct roles which we can think about, visualize about while taking the call in terms of open banking investments or spending so that, okay, we can make the most out of this investment. In fact, to understand oneself is the most, the first stage in terms of uh, leveraging the benefits or uh, capabilities to leverage the capabilities to build upon your business propositions. So that brings us to the fact that, okay, how we can uh, rationally uh, build upon identify ourselves into these roles. So that takes me to the compatibility metrics to identify the open banking business potential. Now here is the metrics which would help uh, each of the financial players in the region to identify um, the appropriate role to, uh, to take it forward from there. So here, uh, this is just an indicative self-assessment. In fact, we can, uh, we at IDC can definitely help any of the financial institution to exhaustively and empirically arrive at identification of the roles so that they can make the most out of the open banking opportunities opening up in the market. So here, I will just indicate it, briefly touch upon the elements of the uh, the, the self-assessment of a potential role. It is split into portfolio markets Cape and infrastructure. When I talk about potential, to take the example of the potential, so per portfolio, the portfolio is all about, okay, whether you identify yourself in terms of exclusivity over certain products and services offerings. Yeah, if at all the answer is yes, in fact, it is, that means you are more aligned to uh, the rules of a financial partner or a niche player by distinguishing itself in terms of products and services. Similarly, in terms of the market scape, if at all your priority is about building the balance sheet size, then again, oh yeah, it is all about financial partners or the niche player. So the balance sheet is all about, okay, building a robust customer relationship. And again, coming to financial partners, which possibly qualifies and more aligned to the uh, role of a financial partner. Similarly, how your infrastructure is stacked up, is it a decoupled technology landscape? Yeah, if at all it qualifies with a affirmation then you are more suited for a platform as a platform player or a service provider so these compatibility metrics to carry out this uh, evaluation of your own self is quite an important aspect to in the open banking investment space so finally i will sign it off by talking about the way forward which i briefly summarize as part of uh, as understanding optimizing digitizing and uh, measuring and finally about evaluation. That is understanding the business priority and the extent capabilities are the key, der uh, key to derive value out of the open banking. Then optimizing the business model and aligning with the open banking initiative accordingly for the reach and scale. Then regardless of the role which you are going to identify, the digitization is the first step towards that. And find uh, and uh, and which culminates into KPIs to measure, define and measure KPIs so that you can have a mid-course corrections in your uh, in your strategy. And finally, boiling boiling it down to the uh, talent acquisition and the continuous development for the evolution of the organization in the open banking space. So that brings me to the end of the business, making business out of open banking. I would be happy to take any queries in this regard and uh, and will be happy to share the opinions as well In if anyone has got anything to do with it. So thanks a lot for it. So if any queries, I would be more than happy and we can take the conversation forward beyond a monologue. Thanks very much, Ganesh, for the Thank insights. You. So there is a question in the chat uh, okay. about uh, open banking standards. Uh, so there is uh, an open banking 
regulation in the UK, the Open Banking Initiative, and also the Payment Services Directive, uh, PSD2, in Europe. Uh, also in Australia, the uh, Consumer Data Right. Um, I, I guess the question is about uh, initiatives within the APAC region. At this point, I think uh, the Monetary Authority of Singapore has promoted guidelines, but it's really up to the banks to um, to set their own standards. How do you see standards evolving in the, in the APAC region? Look, uh, I see, in fact, if you say, go by the precedence of how the regulators are uh, encouraging the open ecosystem, I would say, in fact, it is regulatory driven and uh, regulation is uh, defining the open banking approach whether it be mass in Singapore or possible, uh, uh, or the 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 uh, central bank in India or for that matter South Korea in fact where they, it has gained significant traction is about building up the entire techno technology stack guided by the regulators. While at the same time, in fact, if you see a uh, draw parallel with the U.S. initiative, it is more an open and market left to the market to evolve. In, Asia Pacific region is witnessing a combination of the both component. And personally, if you ask me, in fact, the regulatory intervention in terms of uh, 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 aggregating the payment and certain uh, uh, elements of open banking, whether it be payment and settlement and digital identity, those bit are getting accelerated with the regulatory intervention. So rest of the component in API or open ecosystem space is left to the market to evolve. And that is an interesting phenomena which uh, Asia Pacific region is witnessing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, thanks mm. Thanks very much for that insight. I guess, mm. yes, there is a, there are advantages and disadvantages of taking a, a regulatory approach or a market driven approach to, to open banking. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so and uh, we, we will be sharing uh, sl your slides uh, later. We're, we're certainly recording this presentation uh, so that will be available for, for people afterwards. So Absolutely. thank you very thank you very much, uh, Ganesh. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>